Lee Stewart steam plants, boiler works, part 10. Rubbing down the painted parts using 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper. Followed by another coat of HMG C71 satin black paint. When this coat of paint is dry, the parts should look good. In addition, I'm also renovating one of my old 504 boilers, which is now sold. In this image, you can see the second 504 boiler that needs a bit of a polish and also the 501 boiler side panels that are looking quite good. The existing paint on these side panels for the 501 boilers was in quite good condition really. As shown in a previous video, I repainted them initially using high temperature paint. And after rubbing that down, I painted them finally with C71 satin black from HMG Paints. This is a 504 boiler that I've had for a while. And the reason there is writing on there was I used it in a video to illustrate what was what on the top. And to show that where the tap fits is on the superheated tube outlet. Later on in the video, I'm going to be cleaning the outer shell of the boiler using the polishing spindle. So I need to remove all the fittings first. They're not in there very tight. I only fitted them for the video. And in no time at all, the boiler shell is once again naked. This old 504 boiler is in very good condition and doesn't seem to have been steamed very much. The pipes underneath are quite clean. There are one or two dents in it, but that's only to be expected with a vintage boiler. It should look okay when it's cleaned up on the polishing spindle and looking nice and shiny without any writing on it. Returning now to the painting, Here's a can of HMG Paints C71 Black Satin. And the first thing to do with the rattle can is to shake it for three minutes, which I'm doing, although I've cut the video down a bit. I'm cleaning up the surfaces of the parts that I've already painted because I wasn't happy with the finish. And besides, I need to really key the parts for the next coat of paint. I'm using some 400 grade wet to dry sandpaper and as you can see in the video, I'm using it dry. And you have to be careful because when you use wet or dry sandpaper dry, it clogs up very quickly. Once the sanding was complete, I arranged the parts into an order where I could paint them. And what is this, you may ask? It's a piece of wood that I'm going to use as a prop underneath one end of the 501 boiler to make it so that the casting is level. There is less chance of the paint running or sagging if you do this. I rubbed down the chimney because I wasn't happy with the paint finish and I'm about to give this a coat of C71 satin black. And once again as I showed in the previous video I paint the bottom part first, stand it in an aerosol cap and that way I can rotate the unit without touching the chimney to paint it all the way around. Because the chimney is vertical the paint is likely to run if you apply too much so you need to do it slowly and keep going round maybe a couple of times until it's finished. To avoid overspray from the next spraying operation, I move the chimney out of the way before I start. And here it is, the rest of the parts have been painted. Nice even coats with just enough paint put on, not too much and not too little. Some of these frame castings are a little bit rough to start with, but by aiming the paint at the rough areas, this helps. One by one, I paint all of the parts on the bench. This is the chimney end of one of the 501 boilers. And the final part of the job is to do the same to the 504 boiler mounting. It would appear to be looking good and I didn't get any drips as far as I'm aware. Unlike some of the girlfriends I had when I was much younger. Every one of these freshly painted boiler mounting parts is moved out of the way. Not a perfect place to put them, but they're scattered around part of the outer workshop. This isn't a problem because I'm not going to be using the belt sanders and they'll be okay here. Now it's time to paint the side panels of the 504 boiler. Previously I painted all the panels when they were next to each other and the overspray was a problem. So this time I'm painting two first. I'll move them out of the way and move the others into this position. Once I've painted the first two panels, I moved them into the inner part of the workshop. And before I moved the second panel, I gave it a little bit more paint. 
This paint is very glossy and it doesn't look good. When it dries back to satin, it should look perfectly fine. Now I've moved the other two 504 panels into the same place and the process is identical. Paint these as well. I know in the video it looks like I'm blathering the paint on, but really, you can see in this one, I stopped to let the paint tack off a little bit before applying the next coat. I think that when the paint is dry, it should look good. I always paint in the outer part of the workshop on a piece of wood placed on top of my brazing hearth. I'm removing these two panels and putting them in the main part of the workshop because the brazing hearth is right next to an open door and I don't want the problem of any flies, dust or vegetation blowing in through the door onto the paint. I wasn't happy with the paint finish on this particular 501 side panel. Solution, rub down the area that didn't look good and then repaint the whole thing. With all the painted parts now in the inner part of the workshop with the door shut, I can clean up the boiler shell of the 504 boiler. And for this of course I'm using the polishing spindle. It's fitted with quite a soft polishing mop. I've just applied some abrasive wax to the wheel, it's very important to do this to make it cut. And as you can see, it's removing the tarnish very quickly and leaving quite a good finish. I've shown this process before, but it's good to show it again and to tell you that you must really hang on to the part. If the wheel grabs it, it will snatch it out of your hands and possibly throw it across the workshop and that's not a good idea. You will notice the frequent applications of the wax abrasive. This is quite a tricky job, there are lots of corners to get to and if you miss any of them, it will look terrible. It takes a long time, the video is currently running at 400%. Even though I don't need to clean the pipes underneath, I thought that to finish off, I would just clean them up. I can't do anything more in the workshop until the paint is dried. What else do I need to do? Well, I need to use some Brasso to really clean up the boiler because it's good stuff. That's it for this episode. The boilers are almost ready to assemble. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.